sisters, the Lord is with you. And also with you. We continue listening to God speak to us from the gospel and the tradition of Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. After this, Jesus appointed 72 and sent them in pairs and advanced to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is rich, but the workers are few. Therefore, ask the overseer to send workers to the harvest. Be on your way and remember, I am sending you as lambs in the midst of wolves. Do not carry a walking stick or a traveling bag. Wear no sandals and greet no one along the way. On entering a house, first say, peace to this house. If they are peaceable there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will come back to you. Stay in one house, eating and drinking whatever they have, for the laborer is worthy of the wage. Do not move from house to house. Into whatever city you go, after they welcome you, eat what they set before you, and cure the sick there. And say to them, the reign of God is at hand. If the people in any town you enter do not welcome you, go into the streets and say, we shake the dust of this town from our feet as a testimony against you. But know that the reign of God is near. I assure you on that day, the fate of Sodom would be less severe than on such a town. The 72 returned in jubilation saying, teacher, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Jesus said in reply, I have watched Satan fall from the sky like lightning to see what I have done. And I give you power to tread on snakes and scorpions and all the forces of the enemy and nothing will ever injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice so much in the fact that the devils are subject to you, but that your names are inscribed in heaven. And this is the gospel the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. By the words of the gospel, may our sins be blotted out. Amen. So once again, good morning and welcome as always. Uh, we have the face of St. Clair with us this morning, who is back with us. Marcus, we're not clapping that you walked in. So we're clapping for <laughs> In fact, I, I mentioned to Jim, our lecture this morning, that you had posed for that picture, and he had never met you, and he said, oh my God. And that's because of our wonderful Joe's artistic <laughs> talent. Thanks to the God. So we gather, and as I said at the beginning, we expect the unexpected, okay? So we did a little bit different at the beginning of Mass, right? It's, it's just because of we get stuck in routine, right? We, we sing the glory to God, but when we sing it, are we looking at the Word? Because then it becomes rote. But it, I mean, even for Father Vinny and me, to read the words, it, it just feels different. Okay? And it makes us aware that there are many different ways of praying, of welcoming God into who we are. The way the calendar of the church works, <clears throat> this past Wednesday, the 29th of June, was the feast of St. Peter and Paul. And it just so happens that the second reading this morning, Paul's letter to the Galatians, talks about the controversy that was between Peter and Paul. The two of them are referred to as apostles of the church, apostles of Christ, 
even though Paul never physically saw Jesus, but because of his ability to teach. And then in the, the second reading, they, it, there's a terminology. It says, the externals of religion or not. The externals of religion or not. And what that simply means is that, according to Paul, <clears throat> in order to be a Christian, you first had to be a Jew. Which means that in order to be a Christian, you had to be a Jewish person and you had to follow the Mosaic law of circumcision and the, the manner in, of what you eat. Right? And this was a tremendous argument in the church. So the arguments we hear in the church today are nothing compared to what it was then. And because of Peter's preaching, the Acts of the Apostles, we hear where Peter is in the house of Cornelius, who was a Roman, who was not a Jew. Right? And he accepts Cornelius and his entire household into the way of, as they said, the way, the way of Christ. Right? And one of the things that I think we look at different words. We talk about having a faith. Right? Now, according to Paul, in order to have a faith, you had to have the external mark on your body. Okay? But what, what, we're, what we're being asked for isn't so much the faith, but the faithfulness. Right? How faithful are we to what we believe in? How faithful are we? Well, we, do we have the spirit or do we have an abstract truth that we live by? Right? And that, that's something that each one of us should look at and try to consider for ourselves. Jesus in the gospel, what does he do? He sends out disciples. And he says, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Right? Now, all of you are workers. We're, we're all called to harvest into God's vineyard. Okay? And it's not just those of us who are quote-unquote church workers. That's every one of us. That's what we're called to do. We're called to be workers to inspire and to bring other people into God's way of life. And I've mentioned this to you before. How many of you have friends? <laughs> How many of you have invited friends to church? Yes. Not many. And this is your responsibility. The best advertisement is word of mouth. Okay. And as I had mentioned to you before, carry cards with you. It, it, it's, it's different at first. It really is. And it takes a lot of faith to be faithful to what we're all about. Right. So think about it. And what we're, we're called to be people who are transformed. Transformed into the image of Christ. And I know right now that some of you are going through very difficult times in your life. Somebody's sick. Someone is dying. And that faithfulness is what we're called to carry with us. The spirit has to live within us. And in order to describe that spirit, sometimes you have no word to describe it because it's such a wonderful feeling that we have, that I, that I know that I have, right? that we're asked to spread what we believe in. And it probably one of the best things to end with is very simply what our Father Francis said. Preach the gospel every day. Right? And use words when necessary. 
You don't have to say anything to preach God's word. So this is who we are as friars. This is who you are as a member of our faith community. I'm going to give each of you a new card of St. Francis that I found. It's uh, obviously with the prayer in the back, which is attributed to St. Francis, but really isn't. It was, was it around 1890? Around 1890 that the prayer of St. Francis was, com was composed. You know, Lord, make me an issue of your peace. So, so, just bear with me for a second. Do you have one? No. <laughs> There's nobody on the end, I'm sorry. There we go. And let's close this morning with reading the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen.